Hello and welcome to Guardian Gaming. Um, today I am going to go over the Elite Force Humorex M9A1 uh, 30th Anniversary Edition. This also applies to the M92A1 because they're pretty much the same. The only difference being um, this, I believe, is lasered on here. Nope, it is paint. Yeah, it's lasered. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, so um, I'm going to be explaining the um, selector mechanism on how it works and um, show you guys a little bit on how to um, disassemble this safely. Um, my first impressions of this is it's it's pretty accurate to the real thing as far as weight and overall manipulation of this um, airsoft weapon goes. Uh, this assembly is pretty similar with a um, couple of minor differences. So, to begin, um, you're going to start off with it in safe and you're going to eject the magazine. This does not have any gas in it at all, just so you know. Normally I would clear this, but there's another way to do it. So after that's said and done, I am going to press this little button right here, which is going to push that um, capture up. And then I'm going to flip the slide, or flip the uh, switch, which is going to push this up out of the way to show you what that kind of looks like. And you see me slide release. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into fire because in safe, it has a mechanism that pushes down and disconnects the trigger. So, to pop that up, that pops up that little metal piece, and then you can slide the upper receiver off to show you kind of what it looks like. All right, let's get this camera to focus. There we go. Oh, ah, anyways. So, besides it being really super blurry for no reason, that's what it looks like. So, what you're going to do, a lot of times, this um, spring um, retainer tends to slide off, but what you're going to do is you're going to press and hold down just like this, and being very careful, you're going to let off all the spring tension. So. One of the things that really surprised me was that the spring retainer is not flat. Instead, it has this nub, which connects into the barrel receiver, or barrel assembly right there. And I'm just going to go ahead and separate the barrel assembly from the slide and set that off to the side. Now, the safety pushes this down right through here, and that's pretty much how it works. So, the selector switch, at first glance it doesn't really seem to do much other than have this satisfying click until you look at the top. If I can get my thumbnail up underneath there. There we go. And if you look, it doesn't really seem to do anything up here. So it must be something down in here. Let's take a look at it. So I'm going to use my handy dandy Gerber. And I'm just going to undo the set screws that holds the grips in place. If I could get this in here. And 
There we go. So, now I'm going to place my finger up underneath here, give it a little tug, and underneath here, and give it a little tug. Now, I got to be careful, and you'll see why whenever you lift up this grip. So, if you look right here, this is just a retaining bracket. Doesn't really do much other than hold this in place. So, to show you this in semi-automatic fashion, and of course, grab the plate and kind of give it a little pressure. Whenever you squeeze the trigger, it fires. Now, the slide will come back and push down on this, which disconnects the trigger from the, or the release from the trigger and locks the hammer back. You can see this right through here. There's a little groove for that, and the other side is, of course, flat. And whenever you release the trigger, you get that nice, satisfying pop. I probably should have held on to that. Let's push everything back in place. Alrighty. So. Now watch what happens whenever I put it into full auto. I'm going to squeeze the trigger. This is just going to go down. The hammer is going to pull back and fire again. So this is the trigger rod which goes up into the hammer disconnector. This little arm right here pushes this down and out of the way, so it cannot be disconnected. And we'll lock the hammer back in place. So, to show you with this, how this switch is clicking just a little bit, I will go ahead and remove that. So, again, just a fly ahead, but this time I'm going to use just a normal screwdriver. This is going to be under spring tension, so I'm going to place it flat, being very careful. screw. It's not very big. And there it pops. Of course this is magnetic and that's why I used it. So pull it out and right there is the detent. Just going to place it right here. This assembly too. So there's a little tiny spring that's in the lower receiver that pushes up on this little ball. Oh, I dropped it. I will find that. Uh, there's little detents right there and a little actuating arm. This hole just hooks up right in here, and just slides back and forth. And, time to put everything back together. Let's see, there it is. And we will go over a functions check. So, as you can see, the spring just holds that ball in there nicely. 
and put this disconnector lever back, give it just a little bit of space. Just a little bit of a fuss. That's okay. Yeah, there goes the little ball again. A little ball bearing. These can be pretty frustrating sometimes. Hmm. Even though that doesn't have to be perfectly on there, just have to try not to let it pop apart. There we go. I got a little bit better angle on it now, and I'm just going to give it a little force. Give that just a hair of a bite. Of course, anything under spring tension is going to give you bite. Threading so I don't cross thread it. And there we go. So I'm just going to give that a little bit of pressure. And we're in. So once you get it started a little bit, then you find that little spot. And just go ahead and give her some time. So I went the wrong way there for a second. Doesn't have to be hella tight. That seems to work. So let's go ahead and put everything back together and do the functions check finally. These ones you can kind of give a little bit of um, that Swedish torque to it. I would say some German torque, but that would require tools and precision. Little little joke there. So put that off to the side. The first thing that I want to do is pop in the barrel. To show you a trick with these, grab it like that and just smush it all the way down in. Otherwise, you'll be doing a cat and mouse chase and just fit it up underneath there. Make sure that it's on fire so it goes all the way back. Of course, you're going to make sure that it's away from you. Once it gets right about here, push the slide back, and then there it goes. Alrighty. Safe works.
still holding the trigger. It's in full auto. So let's flip it to full auto. Fire it. Let it cycle a couple of times. Come back. Disconnect it. That's pretty much it.